Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about how you can create a rolling sum based on certain period. So period like this FQT or fiscal quarter or fiscal year. So I have already created one video based on some simple condition uh, which is this. Here in this uh, creating running total or rolling and is total we have a very simple condition where data was uh, distributed by different dates and based on these dates we needed to create a rolling sum. Now since the situation was simple in every row we have a different date we could easily create it, uh, the rolling sum based on click view inbuilt feature. If you have not seen this video appreciate I would recommend that you go ahead and see it to first understand what is the click view inbuilt functionality for creating a running total based on the condition which I have explained. But here in this new example we are going to one level above. Here we are not doing the rolling sum based on these dates but by these fiscal quarter. Now the situation is advanced or a little bit more difficult because in each row like, like date if it is changing but here in this case of fiscal quarter it is same and when it is same it will not going to produce the required output as needed. So what I mean by that let's quickly look at this. So if I right click go to new sheet object and go to chart select the simple table next and uh, let's say what do we want to have is fiscal quarter so I will choose FQTR and add next I will take a uh, sum of amount and click OK just put a label as amount and click finish alright so this is the information but along with that we have fiscal year also right now information is not correct because all these q1 irrespective of whether it is from fiscal year 2011 12 or 12 13 or any other one it is aggregated into one so it is important that we take fiscal year also to have a clear indication of uh, from where the quarter is coming so i'll take a fyr which is fiscal year i'll just promote it because ideally it should come first so fiscal year and then fiscal quarter and then the amount and that's where the complexity will increase when we will create a rolling sum. Now since each Q1 is related to a dis different fiscal year the rows or the count of row based on that rolling sum will be calculated will going to mess up with the inbuilt function. What I mean by that let's go and do it and see it in action. I will add a, another column, do the same calculation, sum of amount, and click OK. And for this, I will use the label rolling sum and I will say full accumulate. That means accumulate from the start and go till the end. And I will just keep this on the right so that we don't come out of it and see it in action. If I click apply, so if you see another column is created and what is happening over here? So in the 2011-12 Q1 value is 11597. In 2013 and 14 value is Q1. Actual amount is 456240 and the value in the second row is 467837. So here in this case, this 11597 is adding up over here. In FI 2012 and 2013, it is Q1 again, and the above value is adding over here, right? So it's basically all these Q1 have been added together. Ideally, this is also not should not be the case, but we will go to a this level and another level and I'll explain it where we will have uh, FI 2011 12 Q1 FI 2011 12 Q2 
minutes in a uh, couple of minutes so right now what is happening that all these q1 have been added together because this is like a one segment then all again values are starting from q2 393768 and adding up together and in case of q4 it is because this has created a segment segment for q1 segment for q2 segment for q3 and q4 but generally how we want in a rolling sum that first it should take this value then take this value and sum it this in the second column then this value sum with this and this that's how it should move ahead and at the end it should give the total of all of these values right so before that uh, i show you how to do or achieve it let's look at the another uh, level where this fiscal year or fqtr is properly sorted and see then how the changes are happening i'll click okay and i will click uh, over first on fiscal year so it is 2011-12 and 2011-12 ideally q1 should come first so um i will actually need to go in into the sort and do the proper sorting so f y r this is should be a to c yeah so now q1 q4 q1 q2 q3 q4 all right now it is in perfect order so earlier we had seen it has the fqtr column has created the segment of q1 and created the sum over here but now the data is in much more better fashion where fy 2011 12 data for q1 is coming here for q4 q2 or q3 is pro probably missing over here so data is coming for q4 like this so here in this case you see that 11597 is the first value which is how it should be but for the second value is also the same in this case it should be the addition of 396551 and 11597 but this is now it is happening and this is because the segment is changing from q1 to q4 and again here is in q1 the value is 458988 and similarly for q2 segment 393768 so the idea is basically to show you when the data is not as, as simple as it is distributed by date and complicated to this level where fiscal quarter values are appearing in multiple rows and uh, we need to aggregate it in a uh, simple table like this for the aggregation of data you will not get the correct rolling sum then how to get the correct sum let me expand this table which is similar to this table if you see in the structure what it has additional is the rolling total and the row number column so let me hide this first and tell you a little bit more about this total this table so what it is doing it is in this column creating a rolling total based on the range sum formula which we have defined uh, in the back end and that formula is having its inner functioning with above and all so what what it is basically doing it is here checking what is there in the current row and uh, doing a sum of it like this but here in the second cell it is picking up the value of the current cell which is 396551 and doing a sum with the first row that means 11597 okay so how it is doing it let me i mean properties the properties are here so first column is total amount which is here second one is the range sum above is a combination of sum above range sum and the row number so let's decompose it with the innermost function which is sum sum is nothing but similar to this it is a sum over here it is saying that first do the sum in the current uh, row so zero is basically indicating in the above formula that started from the current row and after this the second parameter the row number is basically saying that if i am in row number two 
then calculate the sum of all of the rows by defining the range sum formula right so it's basically saying from the current row so if i am in row number 2 then see how many rows are available and do the sum of it and range sum range sum is basically doing its job by creating this range so if for example i am here in row number 4 it is going 1 2 3 creating a range of this and doing a sum because we have specified the range sum. So first it is taking the sum of amount from the current row. This is what it is doing. When it is in the second row, this above and range sum formula is coming into the picture where above is saying that first do the sum of current and range sum is saying that how many rows are available that is calculated via the above function, do a sum of that. So it's basically an inner functioning uh, combination of these formula is basically doing the job for us. But if you see, there is one catch. So the catch is that if I am in a particular fiscal year, 2011 and 12, we have two values, Q1 and Q4, it is doing the job perfectly. But as I'm moving to the next fiscal year, and in this case, you can see the row is also changing, the sum is not correct. Here again it has a starting afresh, it has taken this value and then started doing the job. For the second uh, cell, it has produced the correct uh, results correctly by taking the sum of these two values, right? But if this is the requirement, maybe in certain cases you may don't you may not want to do a sum like the overall rolling, but doing by each fiscal year. In if that is the case, this is the perfect formula for you. But if you want to go one step additional or one step above and doing a complete rolling total uh, for all of these fiscal years, certain, in certain cases you may have this requirement, then what to do? So to achieve that, we need to modify this formula a little bit. And this is, I have figured out with the help of the uh, help which is available for ClickView, where we need to specify the or need to use the total keyword both in the above and row number total. So let me first show you what it is doing when we are specifying the row number total. If I specify this, it will clear all the doubts for you. So here I have the correct row number. It has nothing but it is simply saying the last parameter which I have uh, here in the last parameter in this formula for range sum. So correct row number, if I enable this and click apply, then it is showing the row number in a continuous fashion. Here in this case, in a normal row number function, when I am not specifying total, it is basically checking or it is basically seeing the segment of data based on the fiscal year. When the fiscal year is changing, it is creating a new row. But if I am specifying the row number total, then it is creating a continuous row number. And that's the key uh, to create for the continuous rolling total. So here in this formula, what it is basically, what we are basically saying that, hey, what you need to do, you need to do a similar functionality that means taking a sum from the current row and based on the row in which we are, let's say for example 5, then go to all the rows which is specified in this column. That means from current row to all the rows which is above to it, create a range of that with the help of the above function and do a range sum. So if I expand a for you that will help you understand it. So earlier the total was not present and within row number the total was not present. It was creating the rolling total by segment like this in this case. But when we have provided the continuous range of data both here and as well as here within the above function by specifying the total keyword Total is saying that, hey, don't look at uh, the segments, just create, just start doing the total 
based on how the values are appearing irrespective of in which segment you are and these start from the current row so here in this example in the second row start from the second row 396651 and do a create a range based on this parameter row number total that means all the rows which is above to it and finally do the sum with the help of this range sum function and if I enable this enable apply now you can clearly see the picture that first it is 11597 then it is 408148 which is the sum of these two till here it is perfectly fine this is how we, we were able to achieve it earlier also but here on the third row what it is doing it is producing a sum of you know all these values which is starting from here to up till there and finally if you see the total sum of all of this is 316162 finally you are getting it over here this is how you can do the validation also whether it is producing the continuous total based on based on all of these values if the total is matching like this 316162 finally here in the last cell of uh, correct rolling total sum then you can uh, clearly in the, uh, is, uh, you know identify that whatever you have specified is exactly correct so this is the uh, magic of your range sum function and probably a, a good use case of creating a rolling sum for such scenarios now let's take a step uh, a next step and see um, how, how to further uh, enhance this so what i mean by that sometimes what you want is that uh, you want uh, the sum by certain period that means go to five step uh, back or you know produce the uh, rolling sum of uh, last five quarters and it has to be in continuous fashion that means if I am here on the row number uh, six then it should produce the sum of all these last five quarters then on row number seven then it should start from row number six and go to five star five quarter back and produce the sum so how you can achieve that then it becomes a little bit more complex but here is a formula I have for you if I comment it out and open it so if I'm saying if row number is greater than 5 that means I'm saying uh, basically that I need uh, uh, sum of uh, uh, past 5 quarters and uh, from row number 0 start from the row number 0 and uh, subtracting with the help of the similar formula subtracting uh, what is there um, just a moment I'm dragging it okay what is there from uh, if I'm row number 6 then go to 6 step above and what is uh, whatever is there above to that row no step number 6 and above just remove that because you don't want everything you want just the past five or six period based on uh, your settings so what I mean by that if I just click OK and uh, enable click apply on that okay so now you can see this what it is doing it has taken the step one two three four five this is with the help of if function so if function is basically removing this as you can see this correct rolling total the if function if function is saying that start from row number six greater than five so it is starting from row number six and then from the current row go to the six step back and do the sum so based on this it is kind of producing the result over here Similarly, for 2656203, from the current step, it is going to 5 step back and doing the total. How we can verify that? Let's take it out into an Excel and do it. So here is the rolling total, 22115560. From the current row, we will just add this up. So you can see here in this sum, 22. 
1.15160 or if I have to take uh, here for more clarity sum this right now if I copy this and paste it over here you see this 25265623 so what it is doing that subtraction is basically saying that whatever is there from this sixth element from the current row to the sixth element just remove everything so if I am here in click view that negative or the subtraction this subtraction is helping us achieve this ranging feature that means that subtraction is putting the range from the second cell in the state of the first cell which was the requirement of the first uh, value over here so for the first sum it has to be start from the q1 but for the second sum it has to start from uh, the second cell so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 and that's what we have specified so you can actually play around with this and say 6 5 4 based on your requirement uh, that how, ma how many periods you want to go back and start removing it I want to start removing it from the period 6 that's why it is starting from this period 6 this 6 and anything above that so this is how uh, this uh, such kind of uh, complex rolling total you can achieve uh, with the help of range sum above function and using the total parameter so this is this was basically a query from one of the user about how we can achieve that so thought of sharing with all of you and the user also encouraged me to share it with all of you guys because this is kind of a regular requirement of creating the complex rolling totals so i hope uh, you have found this video useful and uh, uh, probably you will be able to use it in your practical uh, scenarios or the real real time business challenges and i'll meet you in the new video with a new topic